Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 148. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation, or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. All right, so we are here now for the Amalfi Class E series. We're going to be in a Class E vehicle. Taking the Celica. Uh, and we got the Rally D Positano. I'm going to mess it up every time. Uh, and we've got three heats, three attempts of each one, uh, and four stages. So let's get going. Here we go. All right. Very nice. And we're off. Crap. <laughs> turn off racing line coward uh so the only reason i don't turn off racing line is one because i'm just casually enjoying the game it is not to be the best at forza or anything like that um it's literally just me doing a journey of trying to complete all the forza games um and two because i'm constantly swapping between different vehicles i don't get nearly enough yeah, sometimes they can be, but... <laughs> the music. That's vibe. I think I might do... Um, I think this stream's going to be quite short, actually. Because completing these is going to go quite quickly. So I might, at the end of the stream today, after recording my full videos... Um, do a little bit of WRC generations. Get the wheel and do some driving. I'm not sure yet, though. I haven't decided. Um, <coughs> but yeah, the, because I'm constantly swapping between cars, I don't have nearly enough time to get accustomed and to get used to how the car handles. Um, typically, for when it comes to sim racing, you need about... An hour to start getting comfortable and being able to do like fast lap times um, you very rarely see um, what is it like race car drivers they always have the practice session and that is their time to you know get on with it learn and improve and why is the quality so low This is very strange. Go, 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 you bitch. <laughs> Failing drifting, yeah, that, that's gonna happen a lot. Honestly, it it's a drifting's tough. Uh, to be perfectly honest, it is difficult, but with practice you'll get the hang of it. Uh, the only thing I will say, Car X Drift isn't a great drifting simulator. If you're wanting drifting, you're probably better off with a set of Corsa. Um, when it comes to Car X, like I've tried a lot of different games that ha like i can drift in car x was never really the one that made sense it, it's i don't know yeah the ac ui is terrible but that's typically what you get with a lot of simulators in the car industry 
Like, in the racing industry, the UI of the some of the best simulators is fucking terrible. I race in, their UI is horrendous. It's terrible. It looks like some cheap web page from, like, 2005 trying to sell you shit. It looks terrible, but it's a really good simulator. Same can be said about Project Cars, but vice versa. It's got a really good UI, but in terms of simulation, it's not quite as great. But it's a lot easier to get into when doing simulators. Um, a set of course is fucking amazing. But the UI, I, I mean, when it comes to using something like, um, what's it called? Content Manager, you'll end up with a different UI anyways. Um, but even then, Content Manager's UI is, even though it's amazing, like, as a software, the UI still isn't ideal. Uh, it looks like it's ripped straight out of Windows 8.1. So... Yeah, I mean, cameras on all of these games are terrible, to be fair. But the thing is, you could... If if you struggle... I, I'm... Uh, it's really weird. So, a lot of people that do, like, racing simulators... Um, struggle a lot with rallying. I'm the complete opposite. Like, when it comes to rally simulators, like Dirt Rally, uh, Dirt Rally 2.0, WRC Generations, Richard Burns Rally, I'm a massive fan of it. I'm really good at it. I enjoy it. Okay, I'm not, like, the best of the best. I'm not going to brag because I'm not the best of the best. But I enjoy it, and I have a good time with it, and I don't crash as much. With normal circuit racing, even though circuit racing is technically easier on paper because, you know, there's no bumps, there's no weird camber, there's no ruts, there's no none of that stuff. There's no sliding, there's no loss of grip, in theory. But circuit racing, like, a set of course of competizione, can't do it. Struggles so bad. Uh, I will, I will double check in just a second. Give me a minute to finish this race. I could actually send over the file for content manager, to be fair. But um, you just have to still pay for it to get uh, the activation key. There we go. Not bad. See, I don't want a motorbike for the... Uh, the only reason is because everyone I know that has had a motorbike has always gotten into a crash. Um and suffered some form of injury. And it, it's not that I'm like, oh, I'm too chicken, or but I am too chicken. Like, I know I'm a miserable cunt, but I, I, I would rather, like, not die, thank you, preferably. <laughs> Give me a bit of time, and then I'll get back to you on that one, okay? <laughs> yeah, so here's the thing with um, motorbikes is I, I find a lot of like decent motorcyclists who drive properly or ride properly should I say I got no problem with because when they ride like a car same with cyclists I think they should ride like a car as well they shouldn't but it's, it's when they, like, filtering through traffic when you're moving at 15 miles an hour, which, in my opinion, is faster than you should be filtering through traffic. Unless traffic is literally standstill, you shouldn't be filtering through it. Yeah. Yeah. Mackies by TK Maxx. Yeah, that long one. Mental. We got it! First heat done. Let's go to the next one. Yeah, like, that I don't think... I think if it's... If the tra traffic is moving slower than five miles an hour, like, literally walking pace, 
then filter through, that's fine. But if the cars are moving, like if 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 you were to walk next to it, next to the car, and it would overtake you. Yeah, exactly. And it's the car's fault at the end of the day, but it's it's dangerous. Um Another thing I'm adamant about, and I really think it should happen, is bikes need to follow road laws. There's a junction um, in Cardiff, just down the road. It's basically got a bike lane, and the bike lane's got traffic lights on it. Um, so it's its own thing just for bikes. It's not even like, you know, in Swind... Yeah, like pedal push bikes cyclists um so it's got its own bike lane for cyclists so it's not even like if you were in swindon down thames down drive um you would go down and see why is the word cunts being marked for misogyny it's not misogyny <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> that's just stupid Oh, now we can't say the word pussy, because that's misogyny as well. <laughs> you bastard, get the fuck out of the way. Um, yeah, but, like, this is a road where the bikes have their own set of traffic lights. They've got their own s lane. But the problem is, <laughs> the whole thing just got flagged for misogyny. Uh, stupid. I, I do find it kind of funny that there's a term for having hatred towards women, but there isn't a term for hatred towards men. It's just classed as sexism, even though they're the same thing. I, ju I just find that kind of stupid. Very much uh, double-sided. <laughs> it's very double-sided. But yeah, get getting back to the topic of Cardiff. The amount of times I've seen people running the... Um, Ironically, it's sexist. Yeah, that's brilliant. <laughs> um, but yeah, the amount of times I've seen people running like the red lights as a cyclist, like even though the road's clear, they can go. There's a red light. It's it's not legal. Yeah, there's no red light cameras. But I I think if you get caught running a red light in a car. You, and you get punished for that, I think you should get the same punishment as a cyclist. I think if a mo someone on a motor vehicle can get punished for it, if a cyclist is using the road, they should get punished as well. Like, I'm not saying, oh yeah, punish punish them all. Like, you should get punished for running the red lights. Like, I'm, I'm not someone that's like that. But, if you're punishing motorcyclists and motor car users, why are we not punishing cyclists? So I I was like, you know what we should do? Is give every cyclist, every cyclist has to pay road tax. They can pay like 20 pound for the year. It's nothing ridiculous. And that covers them. <laughs> Good joke. Yeah, I know. But like, cyclists should pay a road tax and that means that they would have to have a plate to prove that they've got road tax and that plate could be used if they break road laws to punish them like it oh, it's... I, I know it's not road tax anymore but like there is yeah it's the same thing it's a very similar thing. There, there's still some form of tax that you still have to get even with zero emission cars. But it, you just don't pay for it. I think... I remember... Um, what was it? Jeremy Clarkson had a go at Prius drivers. Basically he's saying, if you're a snob Prius wanker, you're a bit of a cunt. Because your Prius... The batteries for your Prius... The amount of car carbon dioxide that's produced no I, I, I'll get onto it because I think there's a better alternative 
but it's not quite developed yet. But I, I think there is a better alternative to hybrid. Um, but I'll get onto it in a minute. Jeremy Clarkson basically said, <laughs> I'm gonna say it. Um, Jeremy Clarkson basically said that, um, what's it called? Um, what's it called? What do you, oh, I've forgotten it now. Basically said that the amount of, um, carbon dioxide that uh, is produced just to make the Prius because of how many batteries and stuff like that it needed for you to be able to become even basically say produce less than uh, I don't know your typical family car you would have to drive that car for about 20,000 miles every year for like 10 15 years because it's unreal yeah and obviously stuff like when it comes to electric cars it, here's the thing there's a lot of arguments I'll, I'll get on to why I think hydrogen's a good idea because when it comes to Electric, the grid is just the grid. Right, our power grid couldn't handle it first of all, but the grid is the grid. So any electricity that's generated is pretty much put. Yeah, it, in execution, it's extremely dangerous, but here's the thing they are putting hydrogen, they're, they're making combustion engines off of hydrogen. They rallied them, they raced them multiple times like racing is the most dangerous yeah i suppose but then when you crash two petrol cars you get a similar explosion sometimes it's not obviously ridiculous but the hydrogen obviously is going to be more explosive but you can still get fireballs explosions whatnot the electric cars are more dangerous than petrol cars because as soon as one of them catches fire, they're on fire for weeks. As soon as an electric car sets fire. Like that um, Rimac that crashed when Richard Hammond crashed it and it set on fire was burning for two and a half weeks. There, there is obviously risks, but, like, if every car has risks, let's be honest, everything has risks, but if people put development into working stuff out and making stuff work, like, you, you cannot, under any circumstance, just expect something to work first time. Planes have crashed multiple times that... You can't, but if you add stuff to the hydrogen, you could technically change its chemical composition to make it slightly less explosive for storage means. Um, and work out alternatives. It's, it doesn't have to... Uh, neat hydrogen is explosive, yes, but... The thing is, when it comes to producing, there's a lot of pros... Yeah, I suppose. But the, the problem is nobody has put any development into it other than Toyota. Do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah, but these are science companies, not like actual car companies that make cars. So, and 
until one of these car companies starts developing it, it will never become mainstream. Things don't become mainstream because science has told it to. Like, electric cars didn't become popular. Because pretty much the first mainstream electric car that properly got into the news was the fucking G-Wiz, and everyone fucking hated that little car. <laughs> oh, look, there's a G-Wiz. Uh, uh. I, I, I will agree. Electric cars are stupid. They are really stupid. There needs to be... I think for something to be as sustainable as possible, we need to find a fuel that can both generate electricity like a fuel cell... Um, that isn't as explosive as hydrogen, which could be quite easy to do, to be fair. Or that is combustible when mixed with oxygen and a spark, like petrol, that doesn't have any emissions that's produced. Uh, and the reason why I say hydrogen, it, if they can solve the fact that a problem with that hydrogen tank could pretty much create a bomb. If they can solve that, hydrogen is the viable option. Spoiler alert, you can't do that in the size of a car. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to go for nuclear power. We're going to go Fallout 4 in this shiz. Yeah. Thick with three C's. <laughs> I just think uh, one of the funniest things ever. I, I, it, it, I'm moving off topic for this one. Um, one of the funniest and stupidest things ever is these um, just just stop oil protesters. Um, I understand their intentions. <laughs> I understand their intentions of like stopping us using fuel in cars and using oil. But at the same time, do they not understand how the world works? You know, because <laughs> no they do not yeah exactly like we we don't have the infrastructure to not use fuel at the moment until we can make enough wind farms enough batteries enough solar farms any anything can generate electricity as soon as we can do that, then maybe. But do you know how long that would take? 50 plus years, 100 plus years. Like, yeah, it will not happen anytime soon. Meow. I'll be honest, the US is kind of a failed country, let's be honest. The UK is a close second. I, w I watched a video about how the US and the UK are just basically two pretty much failed societies. Pretty much agree on it. Hmm. 
Nyom. Very nice. Good start. Did I not stop recording? I didn't stop recording. So when I press stop recording on OBS and it didn't stop recording. Dick. Uh, can you send them to me on Discord? Because I'm going to lose them on Twitch. Yeah, I'll, I'll give them a watch. I fucking watch a shit ton of YouTube shit anyway, so... I think one of the things, though, that... Like, I'm, I'm all for... Like... Companies definitely do need to look at alternatives because fuel, statistically, isn't good for the environment. But until companies will pull their fingers out of their asses, they can't just say, oh, we're going to be net neutral. We're going to plant enough trees that's going to counteract all of our... Like, they can't do that. They actually need to actively work together to find an alternative fuel to petrol. That is either very close or as good of it. Planting trees is one of the best solutions in the meantime. It is, but it it also isn't because the fuel will run out still. So if we start now working on an alternative fuel, maybe one that's more sustainable whilst also protecting the earth, it's a lot easier that way. Because again, you got to think, if we just plant trees and then keep using the fuel... Like, eventually the fuel will run out, and as a society, we're all fucked. Because, oh no, there's no fuel. The Earth's fine, sure, but now there's no fuel, so we can't, you know, live, basically. We then have to go back to the Stone Age. And that'd be quite a difficult thing for, basically, the whole of human civilization to do. Yeah. Oh, did you hear that um, story about Anchor, the power bank manufacturer? One of their um, sister companies, bro whatever, got um, fucking in a lot of shit for... Because they they were basically a camera manufacturer and they were streaming all of their camera feeds to the cloud pretty much. Um, made up some bullshit excuses for it. Um, and anyone could access it even though they said they were all supposed to be offline. I, I think that's, that's kind of funny. Hmm. <laughs> I do think it's kind of funny though that people are like um, I, I've seen multiple like communities are just boycotting Anchor as if that's going to do much because even though they are similar companies they're not exactly the same <laughs> we are in a world of cancel culture though which again is fucking stupid oh look you didn't agree with me you must get cancelled Dun dun dun. <laughs> yeah, not even gonna go into that topic. Yeah, there's one word. Snowflake. 
That's the only word you need to uh, truly understand the entire situation. Stupid. Salik is doing a good job around here, actually. Woo! I think that's our done. Alright, I'm going to have to edit that clip and make sure I don't have that bit in the middle in it. Because I did press stop recording, but it didn't stop recording, so... Fuck. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.